Good morning, this is Jack from the Art Shot on Net, and this is the pre market recording for Friday the 1st of May. Um, our disclaimer, we do this for educational purposes only, we're here to share our technical analysis with you. We hope you can take some of what we're doing and learn from it, transfer it to your own charts, we're not here to issue trading signals. Right, um, looking at the five minute chart, now the question is, I mean, what I was posting yesterday and what I mentioned in the um, pre market video yesterday morning was that, of course, we've got, um, yesterday was a bearish leaning day because it's the end of the month. Now, this isn't the case every month, but it is the case, obviously, at the end of April and the beginning of May. And that leaned about six to seven percent bearish, and obviously that delivered. Um, now, today, we have a very bullish day historically. It leans 75 percent bullish. Now, this does mean that it closes down 25 percent of the time. Um, so, to that extent, it only closes up 75 percent of the time, but it does close up 75 percent of the time. We do have some numbers out today. We've got the manufacturing numbers, which are out of 10. Someone correct me on Twitter, and quite right to say. Um, and so, ISM is probably going to be bad. Um, I would have thought. Um, and, but the thing is, of course, bad news doesn't mean the market goes down. In fact, two of the most disastrous um, unemployment figures in decades um, arrived in recent weeks and sent the market up considerably. Um, there's a considerable amount of faith, um, faith still that, um, you know, the worse the numbers are, then the more the Fed will intervene. So, but equally, you know, we had unemployment numbers yesterday and the market went down. Arguably, it was going to go down anyway. But I think at the very best, um, I think the reaction to the news lately has me leaning slightly um, slightly bullish um, on rubbish news. Um, so the fact that we're having likely to have rubbish news this morning does not, most definitely. Um, ES could be in an overall triangle, yes. Um, I'm compressing. But more that this is basically from this is basically from the highs yesterday on the five minute. And this is a falling wedge. And it's quite a nice falling wedge. It's very nice falling wedge, actually. Um, got a beautiful anchor there, um, three touches low, three touches above. Notice the very nice and uh, respect of it there. And this is us breaking up from that. Um, now, this means that we could well, well, we are breaking up from a very decent looking falling wedge from the high. Um, what does that mean? Well, um, I think um, it certainly means that the bullish stats um, um, today have a shot at delivery. Um, and also, if you look at the shorter term charts, I'm just going to skip the RTH charts at the moment because um, we'll come to those. But um, on the shorter term charts, because these 60 minute sell signals are more like the 60 minute RSI 5 signals on the um, on the um, on the SPX um, chart. But these ones here, obviously, we had the sell signals. We had sell signals everywhere yesterday morning. Those have all made target. Now, what do we have here? Well, we've got the possibility that we could come down, retest this low, um, and if that holds, then we will have 60-minute buy signals bring across the board, potentially. And if we go up from there, we could see a significant rally. Now, is this a good place to see a rally? It's not bad. Um, we can see a right shoulder high here. It's harder to tell where it would be. Ideally, that would get us back to about the 29.10 area. Maybe it would, and maybe it wouldn't. We've actually got some better prospects. Um, Asian markets, I think, are closed today, um, and the European markets are closed today. And we've got the um, what effect? Um, the question is, Jack. I think Asian markets are closed early next week. What effect would you uh, expect, if any? Not a lot, except the volume's going to be down. Um, volume going to be down favors the bulls somewhat. Um, I think. I mean. The reality is the economic disaster we are watching around us does not favor the bulls. But that hasn't been stopping them in April. Um, and people have been saying, oh, it's the best month in the SPX ever. That must be bullish. Well, actually, the one they refer to as the next best was actually in 1974, and that was a back test in a bear market. So mm -hmm. the fact is the back to, uh, that the bear market rallies tend to deliver the best moves. Um, so that's always been the case, and that's what that's what has happened here in all probability. And I think um, some of you will have noticed the conversation I was having with um, my old pal Pug, who was getting a little snippy about my response to his um, scenario that we've just entered a 15-year bull market. And the reason I don't like that is that, well, you know, I'm an analyst. It's um, What do analysts look at? They look at the past. It would be unprecedented. We've never had an economic shock like this, which has led directly into a massive bull market. And maybe the Fed can make, wave, um, wave their magic wand on this entirely unprecedented thing will happen. But I never predict anything that's entirely unprecedented because, well, that's not the way it works. Mathematical progressions and looking at the past is how analysis works. Now, Stan Puck's just using his wave count. I respect that. And he's done some pretty cool stuff in the past. Um, but the reality is, given that we are still living on Earth, on our Earth, in the history of the market, nothing like that has ever happened. 
Um, I'm, um, my working assumption is it's not going to happen now, and I don't think it is going to happen now. I'm going to work the stats on the close, monthly close on um, SPX and work out what the, where that leaves the odds um, from here. But the odds still leaves the odds clearly in favour of going to lower lows. And in terms of um, times where we've had major economic shocks like the other ones, the only precedence we have results in lower lows. Um, and I'll be doing a post, I'll be talking more about that later. But here, um, could we see a bullish day today? Yes, we could see a rally today that's set up for it. We got a falling wedge breaking up on the five minute. Um, if we retest this low this morning and that holds, um, we could um, form buy signals across the board. Um, NQ, again, retest that low, possible buy signal there. Um, are we reaching, ideally, um, if we were making a head and, uh, forming a head and shoulders, this would come down to the weekly pivot. Um, and we might see that weekly pivot test on ES as well. And to be honest, we probably still have a possible 60-minute um, bicycle forming. Ideally, if we would form a head and shoulders on NQ, it would come back to the weekly pivot, bounce back into here into about just under the 9,000 area, and, which would also be the back test of broken sport and fail there to go lower. Um, would these, if we form head and shoulder patterns here, um, would the original targets I was giving on my Swiss yesterday still be valid? No, they wouldn't because this pattern would be bigger. Um, so, I mean, ideally here, this would actually come down to the monthly pivot and bounce there. Um, we might make it to the weekly pivot. If so, I've got a possible um, right shoulder there, and th that actually might only get us back in a bounce back to 2850, 2060, kind of where we are now. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, if we had a buy signal, given this is Friday, volume is low, Asia is closed, Europe is closed, the weekend is tomorrow, um, I'd be leaning towards probably seeing higher than a bounce to here on a buy signal. Um, chances are, might see 2900. I'll be looking at see what Stan sees, is seeing on the um, on the waves. We will see. All right, RTY. RTY made the sell signal as well. Um, we, we're at a possible head and shoulder neckline here. It's not got a huge right shoulder on it. Um, potentially, we would be looking at um, ideally that would come up to about the 12, um, 1289 area, which really isn't far at all. Again, if we retest the low, we can get a positive divergence here and a possible 60 minute buy signal brewing. YM, retest the low, we can get a possible 60 minute buy signal brewing. Are we in a good area for head and shoulders? Not bad. Not bad, this would be the one here. These would be smaller right shoulders and the pattern targets would be deeper. Um, in terms of where we are on ES on that, um, I'd say if we make, if we go from, uh, let's say the weekly pivot and do a right shoulder and then go down, that would actually have a target more like the 2660 area. Um, so closer to the old monthly pivot. Um, so we will see, and we've got the new monthly pivot obviously at 2764. I'm putting all the, um, I have, won't have all of the monthly pivots on the new charts today. I'll have them on all the main charts and I've put them on the normal main charts already. Um, I'm probably, um, I'll put on them on KC, SB, um, CC, etc. before I post those and I will have them on currencies probably tomorrow. Um, so I've worked most of them out, um, my slightly dodgy other computers permitting. So we'll see. DAX. Um, DAX, we didn't have sell signals on DAX or ESDX um, at the high. Um, they had gone a bit higher. They ruined their nice double top setups. Could we form head and shoulder patterns? Yes. Are we in the right area for a right shoulder bounce? Potentially, yes. Um, again, we can get some positive divergence, but this would only be weak um, if we saw a retest of the overnight low. Same on ASTX. You can see the possible head and shoulder setup there. Um, it wouldn't be a huge bounce. We might not get a huge bounce, um, but we would see. Um, but um, I'm watching the bottom of this wedge. Um, I'm watching, and for any of you who missed the beginning, wait a second. I am watching this wedge. This is a very, very nice falling wedge. One, two, three touches. One, two, three touches. Um, it's nice. It has broken up. Um, it's bottoming. That would ideally involve at least a low retest. And if we see that low retest, um, that would set up 60 minute positive divergence. And that, can make, that could, if we held support there, carry us up for the rest of the day on this very bullish historically day. Okay, yeah, on the yes, can we go higher direct without a low resist? Absolutely we can. Looks like a triangle on the 15 minute chart just broke up and moved above VWAP now. Hang on, let's have a quick look at that. Uh, wait a second. Um, or healthier to retest low and get the 60 minute buy signal. Well, I'd be happier about the uptrend if we get the 60 minute buy signal. Um, I'd quite like to see a bullish move today and a rally. Um, and then I'd like to fail over the weekend and Monday. Um, could this be a triangle? It could be, yeah. Uh, um, let's have a look at that on the five minute chart and just see how it looks. But this may be a triangle within that wedge, of course. Um, so let's have a look. Is this a triangle? 
It's not a great triangle, but maybe, yeah. Actually, it looks more like, at the moment, it looks more like a bare flag forming. Um, what I would do is I'd be inclined to draw the lines like this. Um, ideally, if this was a channel, uh, we'd be heading up into about the 28, 50, 7, 8 area, um, and, then, and then go. Um, um, go back, retest the low, and then if we see the bulls deliver today, which they might not, um, then... Um, then it would go up from there. That's what I'd like to see. I'd love to see a bounce here. I'd love to be long for the bounce, and then short for the move down afterwards. When you say, if we retest the bottom of the wedge, we can go up. Um, if we don't retest the, no, no, no. What I'm saying is um, that would give a very nice setup to go up. Um, it would give us a double bottom. Wherever this high is, we come back, retest the low, and then we've got a double bottom that on a sustained breakover, let's say 55, um, would get us back into the 80 area. Um, that's a nice pattern to be moving up on. Um, if we get positive divergence as well on the way there, we can get a 60 minute buy signal that could carry us back to 2900 and we can have a nice day rallying back to there and possibly a little higher. Um, that would be ideal. The SPX open is also important. Remember, we've got the RTH charts. Um, now here, uh, what was I talking about yesterday? I was talking about a move down to the 2850 area. Now we're actually kind of there now. Um, we could make a low in that area or very slightly below it, and then we can form, we can still form this head and shoulders, um, which is the one I posted on my Twitter yesterday. That would involve, um, ideally, a move back into the 29, 20, um, 20 area, which would be a move back to um, um, the 2910 area on ES. And I've got a level at 2909. I like it. Um, that would be a really nice scenario to play out, give us a really nice um, move up and a really nice. Um, redo the short redo the short entry that would be sweet um doesn't always play out in the friendliest way obviously that would be very nice and we could do that the setup is here to do it we'll see it's um all right guys anyway um just um to review the other charts in terms of um other support and other signals this is a 60 minute cell signal that's fixed on the rsi 14. this is likely to deliver more more downside doesn't have to be today, um, but i'm expecting to see more down afterwards we are still on and it didn't quite fail it had me a little worried, but um, you know, this respected the divergence. We're still on daily RSI five cell signal, and um, that should that should deliver to you. these. Are rarely fail and are very strong cell signals. I like these very um, very well. Do they always do they always work out? No, nothing does. So, um, but insofar as um, what you would usually expect to work out, they work out pretty well. Right, um, other other levels to note, we're not likely to hit it today, but we've got the um, daily middle band at 27.76, um, and we've got the um, 50 hour moving average at 28.57. So basically we're hitting the 28.57 um, area moving average. We're more or less on it. Um, if that gets converted to resistance today, maybe the bulls aren't going to deliver. Um, if that if that basically gets tested and then fails to be converted this time, we can have our bounce. Um, and what I would love to see is this, you know, um, nice head and shoulders here so far. Come down to this area. A little lower would be fine, but not a lot lower because then that potentially opens up the next big um, level, which is 2727. Um, so what we would like to do is get to this level using this head and shoulders, and that would involve a move down to here, open where we are now approximately, move up to 2910-ish on ES, and then down, gets us to that target area, and that would be perfect. Um, so we will see how that goes. All right, let's have a look at um, let's have a look at other instruments. Um, let's have a look at DX. Um, DX um, almost uh, <clears throat> a possible 60-minute um, buy signal brewing, but not quite. We need to retest this low. This could be a bottom setup. This is a nice channel. We've hit channel support. Um, we should be hitting channel resistance next. There's an awful lot of talk, and I know Stan's been saying, um, saying it too, and I've been reading it elsewhere, that um, this economic crisis is going to be very good for the dollar. I'm keeping an open mind, um, but they could be right, and if they are right, then um, this could be turning back up for a significant move here. Personally, I'm keeping an open mind. Um, this it's but that's partially because there aren't really that many precedents for a period like this. Um, seventy four, two thousand eight, maybe. Um, but I'm not sure there are enough precedents to really give a conclusion. And I see the arguments for um the dollar rising, and maybe they're right, and maybe they're not. So I'm mainly watching the short term. CB, um, this has been mystifyingly weak as we've been coming down, but um, this has a shot at coming back and retesting this high. This was a historic high and a wild move, and it doesn't have to be retested, but the setup for it isn't bad for it to get retested. Um, looking at the monthly pivot, new monthly pivot, 180.16, 
watching that with interest. Um, if we hold that, then um, I think we could be starting that move up, um, but it's probably not going to be making any significant tracks today because while the GB hasn't been going down, uh, sorry, going up while the market's been going down, it's not really been going up strongly while the market's been, sorry, down strongly while it's been going up either. Um, my lean is, until demonstrated otherwise, that we're going to see a, a moderately bullish day into the weekend and then we'll probably see more bearish action next week. CL. Um, CL, we had a nice channel here. Over three slightly at the high. Channels, um, it's a wedge actually. Over three slightly at the high. And then it's broken down slightly. We've got a 60 minute sell signal fix. Now I've drawn in a possible ideal bear flag channel um, a resistance. I don't, I don't have a, um, anything strongly backing up. I don't have a strong anchor here or anything. But if this was a channel, then I'd be thinking it would be heading up to here. We've got the sell signal already. We may be forming a double top. It may be failing here. What I don't have is a, um, is a decent level with an anchor. Um, to say that that is likely to happen here and it could go higher and oil's obviously been a bit of a wild animal lately but this is 60 minute sell signal I, th I would think this is probably going to lower and I think we're going to find a high in the next couple of bucks I just wish I had a strong level to deliver that and I don't have that yet but at the moment we are testing the new monthly pivot that's not yet converted to support and obviously we failed there once already we could fail there again this could be the start of the next move down in which case we could see a move um, down to this trendline support in the 13 area or on a break below uh, this could obviously be a flag which is going to deliver a low retest we may well see a low retest don't have to it was a wild low but you know um, we may well anyway ng um ng, NG has broken up through declining resistance my lean is we're probably going to head up and um, retest this um, 210 and overall i'm pretty bullish on ng um, we've still got nice buy signals here um, as they shut as as oil production is shut down to cope with the reduction in demand which is not likely to be recovering quickly we are going to see natural gas production fall as much of it is produced as a byproduct in any case i think the setup on ng already looks bullish that's only likely to help and gc Stan's looking, um, I think, 1660 or something. That would make a pretty nice bull flag. Um, he could all be right about that. Until we see a break of this low here, I am wondering whether we could be forming a triangle here. We don't have any positive divergence. We can go a bit lower. We're actually on the month, new monthly pivot, which is at 1686. Um, SI. Um, I haven't done the monthly pivots here um, on this and on copper because um, yet because um, I'm rolling both of these into July tomorrow. Um, so I haven't done these yet because um, it just wasn't important enough to hit the um, um, hit the priority list this morning. But this looks like again possible flag or triangle forming. HG, HG. We've got um, this is actually playing out as expected so far. I was thinking this was a double top. I was thinking this might be a nested double top, second high for here. We've broken down from the first double top. If we can get through the um, weekly pivot, which is only the weekly pivot for today, then the target for that would be in about the 2.25 area and the main double top support would be in the 2.15 area. I think we may well be setting up to head back to the lows. That's not necessarily a statement about equities doing that at the same time. But I think demand for HG is weak and whatever people are thinking about equities, demand for HG is likely to stay weak for a while. We'll see how that goes but I'm quite liking this topping setup. I think we may well be coming back in for a retest of this low. Your USD. Your USD, um, nice rally. Um, no negative divergence yet. Um, we're testing this previous high area. I am bearing in mind what everyone's saying about DX and wondering whether we might be um, turning back up. Really, on the bigger picture, I'm kind of bearish on um, DX over the next few years, but there's no reason we can't go higher. GBP USD is coming back in for the retest of the high and has pretty much delivered that. This could be the second high. Watching that with great interest. Um, not um, no negative divergence at the moment. Um, partially, of course, in significant degree. This depends on what happens on USD JPY. We had a buy signal fix and it only back tested the weekly pivot, and we've come down pretty rapidly. Um, and my lean is this is probably going lower. Uh, CAD. USD CAD, um, this is, I was projecting last week that we were, this is a bull broken up and this was a bear flag which would break down, deliver a low retest, see, this could be the second low of a double bottom, which it might be, and we might then break it up. We had a 60 minute buy signal on this low, this is playing out as expected, obviously the buy signal is the target. Um, we've broken up through the line resistance, we need to get through weak pivot, and if DX turns then this can easily play out exactly as I was talking about. If it doesn't turn, then obviously that's going to be tougher. Australian 
Australian dollar um, has broken down from the um, expanded rising wedge. Um, we made the sell signal a little bit of positive divergence here. This may be out and it could take obviously you know a while to stop out. Head and shoulder um, forming here, that would be a little bounce and then towards the big pivot area. NZUSD. NZUSD um, retested this high, possible second high again as both all currencies, you know, watching with great interest. What do um, here is to have a huge impact on all of these, obviously. We've got a six minute buy signal fixed and we've now in declining resistance. This may well be bottoming out for the we haven't quite made it to the retest this low, which I was really expecting to be, and we may go, need to go a little lower to reach SB. Nice move up, and we're getting a potential inverse head and shoulder neck. I am wondering about a uh, pullback a shoulder here, maybe back into the weak pivot area. That's where most of these seem to be ending. And that's in the um, 0.13 area, and that's only the for today, um, but is uh, is a very nice solid and probably buy if we get. Um, I really like the um, sugar chart, which is um, one, th one reason I've been mentioning this on the long side. Although it would be nice to have a nice clear low with positive and a little double bottom, but you know sometimes sometimes you don't. So it is breaking up and potentially this could be a bear flag bombing, but to break up double bottom resistance. Um, I'm watching for, for a potential move up to um, 2600 area with a target. I'm quite liking this to the upside. CW, uh, the bicycle is fixed. We have a falling wedge here. It's broken up. I think we're probably bottom. I'm really liking the prospect. Like, we, I don't have the uh, daily bicycle to support that. Corn. Um, corn has retested this low. This bottom, uh, the bicycle made target. Uh, um, the weak pivot as resistance. Might we were forming bottoms, we could retest the low again. See this um, bit. It could be a flag. For, um, that could. This could be the sustained move up on corn. And something I'm watching carefully. So. so, uh, so Got a um, oh, to the session running on a bit this morning. I'm obviously past the open. But, um, six weeks, six minutes, sell signal fix. Um, this could be a flag or a bearish trend. And I'm wondering about a possible recess last low on grains before it picks up. Um, live cattle, um, triangle is very. In the triangle. Um, it needn't be a triangle, but um, a flag forming. Keep um, an open mind. Um, I know the plants are reopening, and that's going to be free. But that could definitely have a positive effect um, on cattle. Um, lean hogs um, had a bit of retesting. We've now got divergence on the 60 minute chart. We've got the potential for a double. Obviously, if that's the case, we have to stop and reverse that. Really important. Um, we, will, uh, we will see how that goes here. It's too ugly for me to mark it up, as I think, but potentially. Um, really, question is I mean, if we're processing plants, that's going to boost demand a bit. Um, he's come in and buy from the, you know, really we should have been doing months ago. And we will see. All right. What's SPX open moves. Do I normally wait 30 minutes in direction? Yeah, I'm normally waiting. I mean, sometimes um, a decent signal, or um, you come up to a decent level, which should reverse in the first 30 minutes. But generally, I'm waiting to settle down. Later, run the late move, um, catch something you just predict. Um, right, yes. Um, quick recap. Um, We've got, um, and we've made the sell signal target, and we've broken through this decline, which I was happy to see. Uh, and this is what this is. Falling wedge, um, 
do three touches, one, one, two, three touches. This is broken up, and chances are this is bottom. It doesn't have to retire, but if it does, that would get the um, double. This could be a bad in which case I was talking about, you know, 56. 57. It's case we're pretty much the ideal level down. Um, if we fell down, we could see double bottom, um, 60 minute positive diversion of divergence of as for today, I'm very bothered. Um, so I would love to see come here, we come back, make a low here, um, make a uh, and head up on 60 minute bicycle, head up to the 2910 area. That is top of my way to today. That would be very, very nice to see. It's the scenario I was talking about on Twitter, and it would be just and, and sweetest scenario, so it would be easiest to trade. Now, yes. Do what I want, but you know, it's a it's a low probability path here. Is the same thing that yes, we definitely do it with the way it plays out. I hope it does. Very, very nice to see today. Today, fail Monday. We'll see. All right, guys. Anyway, because obviously the market is um, for now. I will catch you on Twitter. I'll have a post today about the implication to close yesterday on SPO and mean statistically. What it doesn't mean statistically is that we're in a new bull, bull market that's going to last 15 years. Um, but it might be um, our chances of being a big range trade over the next few years. Um, uh, sorry, next few months um, I'll hire. Um, my pleasure, guys. Anyway, quick comment here. Um, which second? Excellent. I do love the session, um, Jack. Yo, thanks, Sid. It's um, sessions too. Um, I really um, it's a highlight of my day. So, and it's really fun to try and puzzle out um, what the market is. I do love puzzles. I'm sure you can tell. All right. Cheers. I will catch you later.